Hey guys, it's Walter Montero here. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Um, this week, uh, we're interviewing a lady by the name of Sarah Hawthorne. She is a naturopathic doctor. And uh, anyway, in the interview, she never mentions her website. So I just wanted to give that to you up front. It's healthinbalance.com. That's health hyphen in hyphen balance.com. So I just wanted to make sure you had a way to get a hold of her. It's a great interview. She shares some really neat th things with us. And um, I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day. I love Cambridge. Today we have a guest by the name of Sarah Hawthorne. And uh, Sarah is with a company called Health and Balance. Now, S Sarah, you're a, you're a naturopath, correct? Yep, I'm a naturopathic doctor. Perfect. Okay, terrific. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your company and, and, uh, and your services. Um, I've been in practice 10 years. I opened the clinic in 2009. Okay. So we've been around in November 2009, so exactly 10 years. Okay. Um, the clinic started with myself and my business partner, who's an osteopath, Connie Walsh. Okay. And it was the two of us. And now we've grown to a fairly large team over the last 10 years. So that's pretty exciting. And we're located downtown Preston in the building where the surplus store is, and we face the river. Oh, perfect. Yeah. We know yeah. exactly where we are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So tell us a little bit about uh you know naturopathic doctor are they an alternative to your typical western medicine do they you know they complement each other where does where does that all fit in pretty big question but i would I say that. That. So i throw i throw the big questions out there <laughs> how do i answer that unless like it quickly um i would say most patients that we see were very much complementary to western medicine so they might be already like i i I like when patients have a team of practitioners on their side. So they have their medical doctor that they're seeing, they have their, their naturopathic doctor, they have a massage therapist, they have a physiotherapist, maybe they have a counselor, they have a psychiatrist, they have specialists, they have an entire health team, and we like being part of their team. So okay. we, we, we like to think of ourselves as just part of the team and not necessarily an alternative, more as a complementary mix to what they're already doing. I see. I see. Okay. So what is, what is your typical uh, patient load? Like, what do you, what, what, when somebody goes to a naturopathic doctor, do they go as an alternative or do they go, you know, because they've, you know, they've run out of the answers from their, their regular medical doctor? I would say both. I would say a lot of patients we see are just kind of curious. Maybe we've helped one of their friends and they're like, Oh, you helped my friend with, X, Y, and Z. So I'm just kind of curious what you can do for me. Mm -hmm. or, we get, or we get the patients who, or they would just want health promotion, right? Mm -hmm. Like I feel okay, but I'd like to optimize my health. Mm -hmm. Or we definitely get the patients who have been dealing with something for 10 years. They've seen every doctor, every specialist, they've been around the world. And then they come to you and like, okay, now you've got to help me because I've seen all these other people and no one's helped me. So we get a very wide range of patients coming in. Is there is there anything that in particular that would you would say as that this is a very common thing that people come to us for? Is there something that sticks out or is it just all encompassing? I would say overall, I would say most a lot of patients that we see in the clinic, not even just myself, would be a lot of patients dealing with stress management mm -hmm. and digestion. And digestion, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, and potentially wanting more diet support, like on how to eat healthier mm -hmm. um, and managing stress, anxiety, and how that impacts their whole life, whether it's impacting sleep or it's impacting their quality of life or mm -hmm. how to manage that better. And I would, and not that that's all we see, but I would say if I was to pick a population of patients that we see a lot of, that would be it. And okay. I personally see a lot of pediatric patients. So oh, okay. I would say that I attract a lot of the under 12 crowd, but mm -hmm. I also have three young kids. So I think that that I'm kind of in that stage of life. Okay. So yep. that's what I attract, <laughs> Yep. yep. Um, but not necessarily only treating pediatrics. And we also see a lot of women for hormone issues. I see. Whether it's fertility issues or pregnancy issues or menopause issues, or that's another large population of patients that we see as well. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so uh, it sounds like some of the things that you're dealing with is obviously addressing perhaps uh, lifestyle choices or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Is there, is there a, a particular uh, mistake that you see people making that if you, if you could sort of wave a magic wand and say, if I could just stop people from doing this. They this would be better. <laughs> yes. Um, I would say drinking enough water. Like oh, okay. Most of the time when I see people and I ask them about water, they're like, huh. huh. Ooh. I drink coffee. I'm like, that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, vodka doesn't count either. It looks like no, water. No. <laughs> No, another clear liquid doesn't count either. <laughs> so I think that, and, and if you think of every, basically every either alcoholic drink or caffeinated drink requires two glasses of water to replace the water that was lost in that oh, drink. Wow. wow. Okay. So, when you look, so then you ask about water and people are like, oh my God, like I need to be drinking like four liters of water. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So I'd say water and then that's a big one. And, and I would say sleep is Sleep, something sure. that I, I really try and work on with patients, whether it's like moms who are like up all the time with their kids or people who are working too much and they're staying up really late working and then not getting enough sleep. And then productivity the next day is not great either. So yeah, for sure. those are two things that I would say generally, I would say for anyone that you want to make sure they're having optimal sleep and getting enough water. Okay. So are, are, would you say that people typically don't get enough sleep? Don't. They don't, right. eh? Most okay. people don't, yeah. And, and, and then, that is and, why. Well, a lot of people that do get enough sleep still are not feeling rested. I see, right? I see. They'll say, well, I get enough sleep, but I'm still feeling tired, which is yep. why they're coming. But I would say generally most people when I ask about sleep are, are not getting enough sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And is that, is that typically a challenge of diet or maybe just a sleep environment? What, what is the typical challenge to sleep? I'm not sure. For, I mean, it's so varied. I know for myself, I just, I finally get time to myself after my kids go to bed. Yep. And then I'm like, oh, I got to, you know, hang out with myself for a while and do yeah. some stuff, stuff, go to sleep. Yeah. Um, you got that FOMO. Yeah, it's so oh, yeah. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> go to bed already. Well, it's too exciting. The neighbors are out. I got to go see what they're doing. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So how did you get started in naturopath? Uh, what, what inspired you to go down this road? Um, I, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do in school and my university degree, I studied music and biomedical science. Okay. Cause I, I had no idea. I knew I liked music and I liked science. Mm -hmm. So I studied jazz saxophone. So I, oh, wow. okay. I, I have a minor in saxophone performance. Oh, very good. <laughs> so do you still play? Like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Good. Yeah. I used to play in jazz clubs in university and sing there. And then I, okay. And then I did a thesis in fourth year um, on pharmaceutical drug trials and spent a whole semester studying how drug trials are, how they formulate them and how they, they come up with medications. And I just, I felt really uncomfortable with how that's done. And Big pharma. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. and I thought I can't, I couldn't ethically, morally prescribe something to someone if I wouldn't take it myself. Right. So, I was like, okay. And then I started looking into other alternative ways of, of being a doctor and how, how you can help people and kind of came across naturopathic medicine. Very so cool. How I ended up there. Yeah. Cool. So what do you, what do you love most about your work? Uh, I don't know. I feel really blessed though, that I have a job that I feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are stuck in careers that they, they, it's just a job to them and they, they don't love it. They actually hate it. They're just doing it for a paycheck. Yeah. So I feel really, really lucky to, to go to work every day and feel happy that I'm helping people. And I feel it makes me feel good when they're feeling good. Um, I think would, when you can help people is what I really like about my job and being able to be a little bit outside the box. Someone's coming in with something and then you are like, oh, I think it's this. And they're like, oh, I never thought of that before. Kind mm -hmm. of like putting together a puzzle. And it's really mm -hmm. satisfying when you, can, mm -hmm. when you can do that for someone. Awesome. Okay. So at, at what point should somebody consider, uh, you know, using the practices of a, of a naturopathic doctor? I don't know. I think everyone could benefit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
because <laughs> we have our scope is so broad like you know so like the amount of tools that i have in my toolbox so i do a lot of acupuncture with patients so okay. even just acupuncture alone you could say you could come i can help someone with stress management with acupuncture with sleep with digestion with hormones with pain even just with that modality alone and then mm -hmm. you add in and then you add in doing diet canceling and lifestyle canceling and herbal medicine and homeopathy and and then you're and doing lab testing and then it, it ends up being almost every patient i think you could probably help them with something and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're trained to be sort of um primary care practitioners in the way that we're trained to handle whatever walks in our door we have the tools and the ability to handle whatever case walks in the door mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and if we can't then we would just refer them to the, the appropriate person okay perfect yeah. now um what what are the what are the costs involved like and not so much what like pricing per se but is yeah. there is there any kind of coverage that you get from say you know ohip for example or is it is the cost strictly coming out of the, the pocket of the patient? No, yep, that's a good question. Uh, we're not covered by OHIP. Okay. Um, I would say most patients that see us have some type of extended benefits through their profession okay. and through their workplace, and, and we're covered through that. Okay. Um, and if patients don't, then they'll pay and they'll use it on their income tax under the mm -hmm. health expense category. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I try and make it so that um, a kind of a meeting with the patient where they're at. So if, if I'm working with someone and they don't say, they'll say, oh, I don't have a lot of money for extra products and things, I'll say, no problem, we'll just do stuff in the office. Okay. Things that don't, I don't want, I don't want cost to be a barrier to health. I see, okay, perfect. Okay, um, so I'm gonna ask you some questions about Cambridge. I mean, obviously the name of our show is called I Love Cambridge. Of so course, yeah. uh, what, Sarah, what do, you, what do you love about Cambridge? I love lots about Cambridge. I grew up in West Galt. Oh, okay, uh, very good. And my my mom still lives there, so um, that's born and raised. Okay. Um, and then I set up my practice in Cambridge because I felt it was an underserviced area for mm -hmm. med medical services specifically. Um, and I would say my I like lots about it. My I would say the historic buildings are mm -hmm. some of my favorite, and I love the rivers, the speed yeah. in the Great River. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to be a pretty uh, synonymous answer. Uh, we yeah. Get, yeah. Quite a bit. Everybody loves the river for sure. Yeah. So is there, is there anything in particular that you like to do specifically in Cambridge is if they, if you have a day off, the kids are off somewhere, mom's got the kids. What does Sarah do in Cambridge for something to do? What do I do in Cambridge? Uh, currently any, wherever my kids want to go. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, probably coffee shops downtown Gulf. Okay. Yeah. Blackwing. Monograms. Yep. yep. Going yep. to coffee shops. Going to yoga. Um, doing trail walks. That would be yeah. Those kind of things would be definitely on our top list. On the radar. Very sure. good. Perfect. Yeah. As a as a kid, I remember a lot of like Dixon Hill events, either skating in the arena or tobogganing or doing baseball. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great little spot there. That's for sure. So mm -hmm. now, I mean, obviously Cambridge has got its challenges, just like every other community. If you, if you had a magic wand and you could change anything about Cambridge, what would it be? Oh, I don't know. That's a tough question. I don't like Hespler Road. I never have. <laughs> I don't well, know how I you could change it's the that. the most dangerous pedestrian road in Ontario. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but terrible. I know that whenever I'm turning left into uh, you know, somebody's shop there. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine being a pedestrian walking on that street. I know. Yeah, I would change that somehow. Maybe make it so that you could get from one end of the city to the other a lot easier. That's mm -hmm. a bit of a challenge. Maybe another know, bridge? Maybe another bridge, yeah. Yeah. I knew growing up if my dad had to go anywhere to Hespler, he wouldn't go because he'd have to go down Hespler Road. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. It's too far. Yeah. yeah. Too far. I'm yeah. not leaving Galt. <laughs> I, I remember as a kid, my mom, my, we lived in East Galt, and my mom worked at a textile mill in, in Hespler. And I yeah. remember as a little kid thinking, geez, you know, I wish my mom could find a job in Galt. Like, why does she have to go all the way to Hespler? <laughs> it's too far. <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny. Very good. So is there, is there any question that I, that I didn't ask you that I should have? 
Well, I don't think so. No. Good. No. Well, I, I did my job properly and asked you all the right questions. And I think so. Yep, yeah. Very good. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being a guest today. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, we'll get this out. Uh, we, we obviously Facebook is as the mainstay, uh, but we do put it onto iTunes and uh, into our YouTube channel as well. And okay, great. Share all those links with you when they're uh, when they're ready to go. Okay, awesome. All right. Great. Well, thanks so much for being a guest. Awesome. Okay, for sure. Thanks for awesome. having me. Thank you.